Hey guys, it's Chris. Cruises are supposed to be fun, but from mysterious disappearances to unfortunate accidents, here are 10 times when cruise ship trips went horribly, horribly wrong. Number 10. Banned for Life One of the worst things you can do on a cruise ship besides commit some kind of heinous crime is jump over the edge. A young man from Vancouver recently did just that. And while he definitely earned a quick flash of internet fame when the video of him leaping off a Royal Caribbean cruise ship went viral, he's also now banned for life from ever getting on one of their boats again. He could also be facing legal consequences for his dramatic actions. In a statement from Royal Caribbean, they said that the man's behavior was stupid and reckless, and that neither him nor his companions will ever be allowed to sail with them again. The jumper's name is Nick Nadev, and he leapt off the 11th deck of the Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas. This is the largest cruise ship in the entire world, and jumping from the 11th deck is no small feat. It's essentially like jumping off the 11th story of a building, except rather than falling on concrete, you at least hit the ocean. The incident took place while the vessel was docked in Nassau. Nick climbed onto the railing of the balcony while his friends chuckled in the background and then he plunged more than 100 feet into the waters below. He was definitely drunk at the time, as that's a very common occurrence on most cruise ships, and he apparently could barely walk for three days after smacking into the water. The local police in Nassau were called, but nobody pressed any charges. Unfortunately, Nick and his friends were kicked off the boat and had to find their own way home from Nassau. At least he survived. Number 9. An Unfortunate Tumble it's one thing to jump off a cruise ship on purpose, but here's a guy who accidentally fell from a cruise ship. But it gets even crazier than that. According to CNN, the man fell off his cruise ship and was rescued by a different cruise ship over five hours later. It all began when the unarmed man tumbled off a Royal Caribbean cruise ship while it was sailing off the coast of Cozumel in Mexico. When the passengers on a Disney cruise ship passing by spotted the man flailing around in the water, he was subsequently rescued. The man claimed that he had no idea how he fell into the water, but it's extremely lucky that he was rescued at all, considering he was there in the middle of the ocean. If the Disney vessel had not come by when it had, the man likely would have drowned. Plus, he was already lucky for not breaking his neck when he tumbled off the first ship. And for that matter, how he tread water for five hours straight? That's another miracle. He was discovered at 7.30 in the morning. Passengers on the Disney vessel threw life preservers into the water to try and help him. He was then fished from the water and given medical attention before eventually being flown back to the United States. Number 8. A Suspicious Vanishing In August of 2004, a woman named Marion Carver boarded a ship with celebrity cruises in Seattle, bound for Alaska. She thought it would be fun to travel alone, but things started to get weird when Marion's daughter could not get a hold of her. The woman's daughter ended up filing a missing persons report with the local police in Massachusetts. It wasn't for a full week that the police finally discovered a credit card transaction showing that Marion had gone on a cruise. The family later discovered that a man on the celebrity cruise's ship had reported her missing just shortly into the cruise. Most of her belongings had already been disposed of, and it seemed like before the family could even investigate, Marion's disappearance had been swept under the rug. To this day, nobody knows what happened to Marion after she boarded the cruise ship. She certainly never made it to Alaska and definitely never made it home. Royal Caribbean Cruises, the owner of Celebrity Cruises, claimed that no foul play was involved surrounding Marion's disappearance. But the family is not so sure. They think something happened to her, they just don't know what. According to data collected from a professor in the School of Social Work, there have been at least 300 people who've fallen overboard in cruise ships since 2000, and there have been roughly 50 people who've gone missing under mysterious circumstances, just like Marion Carver while on a cruise ship. So what about you? Have you ever gone on a cruise? I've always wanted to. Did something strange or mysterious or alarming happen while you were there? Definitely tell me about it. Let me know in the comments below. And then be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. There's lots of amazing videos coming out all the time right here on World List. Number 7. Cruise Ship Killer? On the cruise ship Disney Wonder, a British crew member named Rebecca Corium went missing on March 27th of 2011, and some believe that she was murdered. 
Not only do they believe Rebecca was murdered, but they also believe the cruise ship operators could be playing a part in covering up the gruesome details. Yes, hundreds of people have vanished because of falling overboard on cruise ships, but this can be attributed to drunken passengers. Rebecca had over a year of experience on the Disney cruise ship and would not have accidentally tripped and fallen into the water and died. According to a lone bohemian police officer who was trying desperately to get justice for Rebecca in 2011, the investigation was littered with faults. And according to the private investigator hired to look into the mysterious disappearance of Rebecca, it should have been considered a murder investigation. Most honest investigators believe that Rebecca was attacked and then her body was dumped into the ocean. But to this day, nobody knows who could have attacked and murdered Rebecca. Number 6. Kidnapped by the Crew? In a horrendous story from 1998, Amy Lynn Bradley not only vanished from a cruise ship, she was considered kidnapped. It happened on March 24th when her father had woken at around 5.30 in the morning and noticed her there, so she was definitely still around in the early morning hours. But 30 minutes later, when her father returned to the room, she was gone. Amy Lynn Bradley vanished from her private cabin and was never seen from again. But here's where the kidnapping comes into play. The night before the disappearance, Amy and her brother partied in the ship's nightclub. Amy's brother apparently left the club while Amy was hanging out with one of the members of the cruise ship band. Her brother later claimed that Amy was given special attention, not only by the members of the band, but also by the staff of the cruise ship. Amy's family alerted the workers on the cruise ship and the boat was docked. The entire vessel was inspected thoroughly, but nobody could find Amy. This led the family to believe that the crew had kidnapped her, but of course, these accusations have never been confirmed. Number 5. Murder on the High Seas A man from Utah named Kenneth Manzanares is facing life in prison after he turned an ordinary cruise ship trip into a murder scene. It all happened in 2017, when Kenneth and his wife got into an argument after she told him on the cruise ship that she wanted a divorce. Bad timing, but still probably not worth a murder. He ordered their 22-year-old daughter out of the room, and moments later, there was a scream from the balcony. The couple's daughter rushed back inside and witnessed Kenneth beating her mother to death. Security guards arrived quickly after. There was obviously quite a bit of chaos, and even though medics tried to save the woman's life, she died of blunt force trauma. Kenneth was charged with murder in the first degree and will likely receive life in prison. Number 4. A Horrible Birth if you're nine months pregnant, you probably shouldn't be getting on a cruise ship. And yet a woman from Indiana in October of 2011 gave birth alone on a cruise ship during a trip to St. Martin. She never called for help, she didn't tell anyone else on board, and the baby subsequently died. She placed the newborn child in a towel after delivering it and tucked it under her bed, where a cleaning crew later found the body. An autopsy was done that revealed the child had been born alive and it could have been saved if it had the proper care. But the woman named Alicia Kerr, who had been 24 at the time, was apparently scared, confused, and she didn't know what to do. She ended up giving birth to that baby in a bathroom all by herself on a cruise ship and was so distressed that she watched helplessly as her own baby perished. According to Alicia's defense attorney, she had only recently discovered that she was pregnant and thought she was only six weeks along in her pregnancy. Even when she began to give birth, she just thought she was overheated. The birth happened exceptionally quickly and Alicia ended up using a razor blade to cut through the umbilical cord. She then spent roughly two hours in the bathroom with the baby trying to keep it alive, but according to her, it didn't cry. Its eyes wouldn't open and she eventually gave up because she just didn't know what to do. She was sentenced to a single day in prison for the crime of involuntary manslaughter. Since the incident, Alicia has given birth again. She now has a healthy daughter. Number 3. The Diamond Princess Perhaps the worst cruise anyone could have been on in 2020 was the Diamond Princess. The trip began to turn sour three days in. China had shut down all travel from the interior city of Wuhan. The world was in panic, and the passengers were relaxing in the sunshine. It was on February 2nd that a passenger who had left the ship eight days earlier was found to have tested positive for the emerging coronavirus. The captain was told to hurry back to Tokyo Bay so the passengers and crew could be screened and then released. And most of us know what happened next. There were 2,666 passengers and 1,045 crew members on board the Diamond Princess. That equals 3,711 people. It started with 10 infections on day one, 10 infections the next day, 41 infections on the third day, and 66 infections following that. It ended up being one of the worst infectious disasters to ever happen on a cruise ship. 712 people ended up being infected on board and 14 of the passengers died. 
The ship spent 27 days in Tokyo Bay while the virus ravaged just about everyone on board, causing massive amounts of damage. Most people ended up going home in the end, but they certainly got way more than they bargained for when they stepped onto that boat. But perhaps what is most fascinating about the Diamond Princess was that at the time, the ship accounted for over half of the cases of COVID-19 documented outside of mainland China. And that's just on one boat and only because of intense testing. We soon found out that the rest of the world was in the same kind of disastrous situation. Number two, slippery fingers. It doesn't get much more unfortunate than the story of Salvatore Anello, the grandfather who accidentally let his granddaughter slip through his fingers and fall to her death. Salvatore later pled guilty to negligent homicide. The grandfather was on vacation with his son, his daughter-in-law, and their toddler baby. The grandfather was playing with the little girl near a window that he thought was closed. Salvatore was colorblind and let the girl go, thinking that she would be resting against the glass. But instead, she fell 11 stories and landed on the concrete dock. She was pronounced dead immediately at the scene. The dead girl's parents supported the grandfather throughout the court proceedings and refused to file charges against him, as they surely knew it was not intentional or entirely his fault. Salvatore did not receive any jail time, but he did plead guilty so the entire chapter could just be put behind them. Naturally, the family has since sued Royal Caribbean Cruises, accusing them of gross negligence because there was an 11th floor window wide open with absolutely no warning. As of yet, it's not been reported whether the family won against the cruise line in court. Number 1. Life in Prison this terrifying tale should be a script for a horror movie. A couple of teenagers broke up and drifted apart, then reunited three decades later, fell in love as adults, got married, and then suddenly one of them murdered the other one and left them on the bathroom floor of a cruise ship. Oh yes, the end of this story goes from romance to horror very quickly. According to the Baltimore Sun, Robert McGill of Los Angeles murdered his wife Shirley McGill while on a carnival cruise ship. Robert was later sentenced to life in prison by a United States district judge. It all happened on July 14, 2009. The apparently happy couple were on a five-day cruise heading to Mexico. It was Robert's 55th birthday. He drank quite heavily in Cabo during the day before reboarding the ship for the venture home. There isn't much known about what happened between the time Robert and his wife got on the boat and then Robert strangled her to death. But what makes this story truly shocking is that after Robert left his wife dead on their cabin floor, he changed his clothes, went up to the deck, smoked a cigar, and had another drink. He sat down with another couple. They asked where his wife was and he told them plainly that he had just murdered her. Robert was arrested the moment the ship docked in San Diego. Surely there was some type of mental illness going on with that man. So, what's your opinion about these crazy cruise ship stories? What do you think causes people to go missing, and why do you think people turn into murderers on cruise ships? Is there something about being on the ocean? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thanks for watching. Be sure to come back soon, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button on your way out.